All right. No time to lay around. Gotta go. Okay, so why am I up at 4 a.m. on a Saturday? Well, in Texas, if you're up this early on a weekend, you're doing one of three things. Either fishing, hunting, or barbecuing. Guess which one of those I'm about to do. My name is Andrew McNevin with Andy Eats. And I have one simple goal. Eat the best beef at the best restaurants. And I'm teaming up with a legendary Mr. Meat Master in Creekstone Farms to do exactly that. What a time to be alive. My first adventure takes me to the city of Spring, Texas, a city known for its down-home southern charm, its picturesque downtown, and the reason why I'm here at 5 a.m. on a Saturday, some of the best barbecue in the state of Texas. Alrighty, so I'm here a little early, but early is always good in the barbecue business because in less than six hours, it's game time. On a typical Saturday, Corkscrew Barbecue serves about 1,500 guests. It's all hands on deck for this operation and every second counts. But for the owners, Will Buckman and his wife, Nicole, hard work is just par for the course. So besides their barbecue, one of the things that I love the most about the Corkscrew Barbecue team is their story. My name is uh, Will Buckman. Nicole and Will, they did not go to some fancy pants culinary school overseas. For the, for the better part of 43 years, I've lived right here in spring. They honed their barbecue skills in their own driveway. Nicole and I had, uh, had two small kids. We moved into that house and I bought a little smoker for the driveway. Uh, it was an itty bitty little thing. It would cook a brisket at a time. Their family and friends took a liking. It was a hit. Like everybody agreed and they're like, yeah, you, you're really good at this. So people started asking Will to smoke their meat for them. I mean, hey, if I bring you a brisket, can you, can you smoke it for me? Or if I bring you a wreck of ribs, can you smoke it for me? I, my daughter's birthday party or, you know, whatever the occasion may be. And I'd be like, yeah, no problem. You know, the smoker's gonna be going anyways because that's what I love to do. And next thing you know, he has a full-fledged catering operation running out of his house. I would cook through the night. She would, in the morning, she would take over for me and finish uh, the cooks and then trim everything. Uh, slice everything, pan it up, make beans, potato salad, sauce, whatever had to be done, hmm. and she would deliver it. All the while juggling his real job at AT&T. So I was still working at AT&T full time. My wife was a stay at home mom, uh, raising our, our, our kids. And uh, they got a small trailer, operated out of that for a while, upgraded, and then really upgraded to this. Okay, so we're all caught up on the story now. Time to see how it all works. So this will be a lot of fun. I mean, I filmed a lot of barbecue cookouts with my brother and family and stuff like that, but I've never been inside behind the scenes at a barbecue restaurant. This is gonna be awesome. I cannot wait. Let's do this. What a lot of people don't understand when they eat their delicious brisket is how much time it takes to make it. If you have a barbecue restaurant, literally everything revolves around that brisket cook time. Everything. And although it may seem counterintuitive, prepping brisket for the smoker does not begin first thing in the morning. That begins two full days before it's ready to be served. Mm. So, you know, you I think we talked earlier about, you know, you really need a 48 hour lead time yep. to prep everything and get it ready for the cook. All right, so what we'll do is start at about uh, four o'clock this afternoon. We'll come in, we'll trim and season all of our briskets. My name is Brian. I've been working here for about three years. What we're about to do is uh, start trimming briskets for tomorrow's cook. And then when we're done trimming them, we're gonna start seasoning them and prep them for tomorrow's pit. 
So before we get too far into this here, Will is going to run us through some standard brisket vocabulary. So there's really, there's three muscles that make up a brisket for the most part, but what we're dealing with here is you've got your flat, um, and then you've got your point back here. It basically boils down to the point is thick and tall, the flat is thin and short. And the thicker something is, the longer it takes to cook. And everything from how the meat is trimmed to where the meat is placed in the smoker makes a huge difference in the final product. What I do here is I just try to get as close to the point right here. Uh -huh. And what we're trying to do is make this point lay flat. It lays evenly and it has good aerodynamics for the pit since we have oilers and it's like a rotisserie. So it has to, we have to make sure it flies through the air properly? Is yes, that what sir. you're saying? Yes sir, it's like a, I like to think about it like a car in a wind tunnel. Hold on, a flying car. He's promising flying cars, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Finally, we've done it. We've done it, y'all, we've arrived. But it's not just about airflow. To achieve the proper mouthfeel, Brian must trim the excess fat and the dreaded silver skin. And what is silver skin? So it is, uh, this is a pectoral muscle of a cow. So there's other muscles attached to it, but the silver skin is just the layer of membrane in between two different muscles. It's not really digestible, so it's better just to take it off. Now in terms of <coughs> the marbling there, does that look good to you? Oh man, this is uh, great marbling. You can definitely tell that it's a prime brisket. So what, in your opinion, is the critical elements of making really good barbecue? One of the first things that comes to mind is sourcing the right ingredients. It's one of the reasons why we use Creekstone Farm. When I started out doing barbecue, you know, we, we were obviously looking around for the cheapest piece of meat that we could find. So. Before this, I worked in, as a butcher. Wherever I could find the cheapest select brisket, that's what I was putting on my smoker. And I have dealt with a lot of meats. Uh, but I found over time, the better product that you start with, the higher your success rate is going to be in the end. And Creekstone's product is very good consistency. Fat content is going to be more consistent. The quality of the meat, the flavor of the meat, everything's going to be more consistent. And I found that Creekstone uh, provides that. My name is Chuck Godwin. So the Black Angus beef that we have is, is genetically pure. It's from farmers and feeders and ranchers that we've worked with for many years, many generations. It's a never ever product, which means, you know, no antibiotics, no hormones. We know where these cattle are coming from. We know the, the pure lineage of the Black Angus cattle. They're in a relaxed state. They're comfortable with their environment. So the science behind uh, humane treating, treatment of animals, obviously you do it because that's the right thing to do. There's nothing introduced to this cow to help it grow faster, to help with production costs, any of that stuff. The science behind it is it makes the meat more tender. So, you know, there's no endorphins being released into these cows, stressing them out. It helps the muscles relax. They're, they're more in a relaxed state, and it just makes for a, a more tender meat on the plate. All those little things make a huge difference. It shows in the end product that you have. Bottom line, Creekstone Farms provides Will and his team with the most important input the highest quality beef on the market. And with that canvas, they are able to paint barbecue masterpieces. And just like paint on a painting, barbecue needs its own kind of special covering. What about your, your your seasoning? What's your what's your kind of method on that? Seasoning is is you know typically something that you do to taste. So all right, so we season our briskets with our signature love rub. So really all I had to judge my seasoning techniques was on uh, based on my own palate. All right, this is our love rub. It's filled with everything good that you want to put on a piece of meat. Uh, I use a, a dry rub, uh, but it's, it's a little more in depth. You know, I, I want salt, I want pepper, uh, I want garlic for sure. Now wait, wait, wait. He's gonna start giving away his yeah. secret here. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, I, there's really, that's the, that's the funny thing too, is there's really no secret. As upfront and laid back as Will is, I'm still not gonna be the guy that leaks out his love rub recipe. You'll just have to come to Corkscrew and try it for yourself. Trust me when I say, you will not be disappointed. With the last of 30 briskets seasoned perfectly, day one of the two day process finally comes to a close. From here, they rest until the next day at 1 p.m. when they are finally put on the smoker. It's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 1.15 in the afternoon. They're going to go on the pit right now. Cook through the night. About 6.30 in the morning, they'll come off of the pit for Friday. Sir. So it's about 48 hours lead time that you need to get all this stuff accomplished. 
So it's not just slapping a steak on the grill. It's definitely not. A little bit more involved in a steak. A little bit. <laughs> Will and his team have the process so dialed in, there's even a specific way that they place the briskets within the smoker. Because this is a, uh, a rotisserie pit, uh, when you load meat on these pits, you can, you can change the pitch of these depending on the weight differential. So what I like to do is I load my briskets up first. I always put the heavy side to the back because that's where the heat comes from. So it, it tilts the racks a little bit. But what can happen is, is they're, as they're spinning around, those racks, if they're leaning in one direction too far, they might hit the next rack behind it as they're making their way around. It'll dump all the meat, it'll dump the racks, they'll tangle up together and it'll just make a complete mess and jam the entire pit up. So what I like to do is I like to use my pork butts as a counterweight. I'll put my briskets on there and then put my uh, pork butt at the very end, front to back, depending on where I need the weight to go. That way it keeps my, my racks level. So I imagine there's been a few meat disasters in there? Not here. It's happened to other folks. I've let them lead by example for me. He does his homework, ladies and gentlemen. Every little detail here matters. And with all 30 briskets loaded and cooking, that's a wrap for day two. The briskets will cook overnight with the night crew monitoring every detail until the next morning, which brings us back where we started. 5 a.m. on a Saturday. When I arrive, the morning crew is already hard at work, prepping for the busy day ahead and keeping the fires stoked. Fires that run 24 hours a day. But that's just the beginning of an intense morning. So first thing first at 5 a.m., we're gonna crack the pit with the pork butts on it. We're gonna take those off because they're guaranteed to be ready. Stoke the fire again and get it ready for all of our smaller proteins. You've got ribs that need to go on, pork ribs. You've got uh, chicken that needs to go on. You've got turkey breast that needs to go on. But we have to have that pit loaded and, and back up the temperature somewhere around the neighborhood of at six o'clock in the morning. 6.30, we open the doors to the other smoker with the briskets in it and check to see uh, their readiness, their doneness. And, uh, usually they're ready to be start start getting pulled at 6.30 in the morning. But pulling the briskets doesn't simply mean just taking it out of the smoker. In one fast motion, Will and his team take the brisket out, poke it to see if it's ready, and if it is, they wrap it in cellophane and let it rest for four hours. And this happens to every single of the 30 to 45 briskets that they have for a given Saturday. But remember, Corkscrew Barbecue doesn't just serve meat. While all this is going on, they gotta make their sauces, their sides, and their desserts. In the meantime, you know, we've already got water boiling on the stove. Uh, we've gotta make macaroni. Uh, you know, all of our onions and, and stuff has to get chopped. We've gotta make our pico de gallo. We've gotta make our house-made queso every single day. We make our barbecue sauce, our pulled pork sauce fresh every day, our green chili ranch every single day. All these things have to happen before 11 o'clock when we open our doors. Wow. In my opinion, one of the biggest sins in barbecue is to neglect your sides. It's easy to just sit back and skate by on the deliciousness of your barbecue and let your sides become an afterthought. That simply will not cut it here at Corkscrew. Each side is a family recipe made with the utmost love and care. Nicole has had a hand in every aspect of this business. She was raised in a household where her mother, you know, cooked every single night. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't didn't phone it in. Didn't put microwave dinners in the microwave. She'd come. She'd go to work every day. Come home and change clothes and get dinner started. Wow. All scratch made stuff. Hmm. So Nicole grew up in that environment. The, the lady knows how to cook. Yeah. And she's got an, a, a, an exceptional palate as well, so she understands flavors. And yeah, she had a huge hand in everything that we do, but all of the sides, that's all her. I am a huge fan of Corkscrew sides. And I got to personally see them make the coleslaw, the potato salad, the baked beans baked potatoes, and my absolute favorite side of all time, macaroni and cheese. And after that, I got to see the making of my favorite dessert, peach cobbler. I'm really starting to feel what it was like growing up in Nicole's house. With the last bit of meat coming off of the smoker and being staged for service, 
the grueling morning prep has finally come to a close, and it's time to open the restaurant. With a line already forming around the block and the most intense part of the day about to begin, Will and team gather for a tradition that is old as barbecue making itself, drinking beer. Give me a cheers, Will. Cheers, brother. Boom. <laughs> cheers. Boom. Woo! Yeah. That's beer so you'll see here in a minute when uh, we open the doors that Saturday is kind of like going to war. So this is just like our, <laughs> our pre-butt kicked drink. With our beers drank and the restaurant fully prepped, it's finally time for service. All right, so we're here at Corkscrew Barbecue. We're gonna go into the kitchen and see what's going on behind the scenes. I am absolutely salivating as I watch this delicious food through my viewfinder being cut and prepped and plated and served up to the eager customers of Corkscrew. And there is not a single frown in the house as I make my rounds. Hello, I'm Carlos Lewis. I'm from Pearland, Texas, and um, the food here is great. I literally drove about an hour to get here, me and my dear friend, LaTanya. Uh, hey, I'm Sean, uh, AKA NYC BBQ. My name is Tom, also known as Hirotoshi Mugen, and Corkscrew Barbecue has some of the best barbecue I've had in Texas so far. Big, big fan of Corkscrew Barbecue, one of the best in Texas. Just love everything about this place. Great, great people, great food. One of the best. This like amazing beef rib, you see I'm holding it, right? My name's Ryan Cooper, also known as Barbecue Tourist. I'm here at Corkscrew Barbecue. And then we got some brisket, and we have potato salad. I love Will and Nicole Buckman. We got the, the beans on the pit. All the food has been amazing. And then for dessert, we're gonna top it off with some apple cobbler. Really love it here. Everybody should check it out. You won't go wrong, you won't be disappointed. Way to go, Corkscrew. Hey, our festival, what's your name? and I like the barbecue really much. With lunch service finally winding down and I'm happy with all the shots that I got, it's finally time for me to do my favorite thing, eat the food. I think they're working on my part. And what did I order? A half pound of lean brisket, a half pound of moist, and as many sides that they can fit on the tray. Mac and cheese, baked bean, potato salad, coleslaw, and cobbler. There you go. Enjoy. Would you look at that? Thank you so much. Y'all are so awesome. Wow. This is a straight up Texas feast. This is going to be a meal for a king right here. I ain't no king though, but I'm going to eat like one. All right, here we go. Best part of the day right here. Digging into some brisket. Let's check out the fatty brisket, what they call the moist brisket first. Here we go, going in. You know, some people say that perfection is unattainable. I disagree. That is perfection. Mm. Let's try out that flat. Perfect texture, perfect moistness. Even, even with the flat, it's still very moist. That is beef heaven right there. You know, when I think of, when I think of brisket, it kind of reminds me of cake. It's like the cake of, of, of beef, if you will. Like, yeah. so I, I, I call brisket, I call it beef cake, and this is the most delicious beef cake I've ever had in my entire cake. <laughs> because it's kind of like, it's kind of like a cake. Yeah. Like it's 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 very powerful beef flavor, and it's heavy. Yep. Yep. It's very much very much reminds me of the cake. And then the sides to me are like the icing on the cake, man. It's yep. like to me if, if if you rock out your barbecue but you don't have good sides, yeah. you're really not quite you know putting that icing layer on. That's correct. And I gotta tell y'all, your sides are freaking on point. Oh, thank you. The I don't know, and I don't know which side I like best. And man, I'm a huge, big time mac and cheese guy. Yep. And so, like, anytime someone wheels out some mac and cheese, I'm like, all right, let's see what you got. Right. And I, I took like one little noodle, and I was like, ah, forget it. <laughs> the beans are are just they're they're 
they're not too sweet because sometimes you get just beat over the head with sweetness and molasses and brown sugar. That's like the perfect blend of savory and salty and sweet. Oh my gosh. And then the, the potato salad. The potato salad. This is blasphemy. Mom, please forgive me. No joke, that potato salad is, that's close to number one. My mom made the best potato salad ever until I tasted y'all's potato oh, salad. Oh, that's great. Oh, and then the cobbler, okay, I gotta stop. <laughs> I gotta stop. I gotta, I, now I'm gonna keep rambling on here right. about y'all's food. And I wasn't surprised at all when the cobbler completely knocked my socks off. Mmm. But I always had to have something to get the sweet taste out of my mouth, and I always save the best bite for last. So one of my rules for eating any kind of beef is that you always save and single out the best bite for last. And that is exactly what I did here. I have a delicious piece of the moist part of the brisket and I'm gonna sauce it up and I'm gonna just whoomp, check this out. So it uh, looks like I put a little too much sauce on it. It's hard to operate the camera and pour sauce at the same time. But regardless, here we go, the last bite. If that is what heaven is like, I, I can't even finish that sentence. This is heaven. <laughs> and the sun is like pointing in the right. Look at that. Oh, oh. Wow. Amazing. After having a full on religious experience with my last bite of brisket, the time has finally come for me to ride off into the sunset. Getting to know Will, Nicole, and their entire staff was a really fun experience. I learned a ton about barbecue and running a barbecue restaurant. And oh yeah, I got to eat some of that barbecue. And trust me when I say, from the beef ribs all the way down to the coleslaw, it did not disappoint. No matter how you cut it, Corkscrew Barbecue is in the top of the top of Texas eating experiences. And now that I fully know the amount of work that it takes to keep a restaurant like this operational, I leave with my day finished, knowing that their day is starting all over again. So the next time you're at a barbecue restaurant, remember that 12 hour brisket cook time, the day and a half prep before that, and all of the other hundreds of details that goes into making a barbecue restaurant successful. And always remember, save the best bite for last.